different, but uh, the province of Loja this year, there was 3,000 hectares of forest that burned down. And it, it got close. I mean, it was close to where I live, mm -hmm. like really close to where I live. And uh, this was a cell phone that was stolen by, from a local store owner by a local person. We have Luisa Gonzalez, who is the socialist candidate. Hello and welcome back to the Ecuador Insider Podcast. Jesse, Carl, Brandon, welcome back. Guys, we appreciate all the comments. Keep them rolling. We want the questions, right? We want to make sure we're answering the things that you guys want us to talk about here on the pod. So please, whatever burning questions you have, throw them in the comments. We will give you our thoughts on them in the upcoming episodes. We're going to answer a few of those Q&A questions here today. We're going to do a live Q&A coming up in a couple of weeks. Looking forward to that. So thanks for tuning in. Please put a like on the video if you get any value out of this content. We'd appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, and let us know also in the comments, what is your favorite type of content that we do on this channel? Uh, Carl's been pumping out some vlogs recently, trying to show you the recent areas. Obviously, we've got the pod. Our property videos are now over on another channel, so check the description for that. If you're interested in learning more about this area, about Ecuador in general, we offer a kick-ass, am I allowed to say that, retreat uh, coming up. And so please check the link below. Sign up for that. We'd love to see you here. Um, all right. So today is, I mean, we got to kind of, what do they call it? Eat a little crow. And they are doing... There's a saw going on up here, so we'll see, guys, if that's bothering you. I apologize, but they are cutting some wood up above us. We've got to eat a little crow here. I think two of the last three episodes, we were joking about how you don't have to worry at all here, really, about natural disasters, and um, fires in particular are not an issue. Uh, and we just had a big fire in this area that we'll talk about. So we'll talk about that today. Um, we'll talk about some of the politics as well. Interesting time here. Elections coming up in November or the runoff election uh, to see who will man. I know it's not the White House or the Oval Office. What's the expression in a foreign country for the presidency? I do not know. But who will be president of Ecuador? You can make one up. Let's make. That's your job. <laughs> what, what do you think, Bowlers? <laughs> I have no idea. Isn't it the assembly? Oh. That's Congress, but that's also Congress. <laughs> but the, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll think of something for next one. Um, so, yeah. So, definitely some interesting news, some news po new polls out that we'll chat about. And we'll get to some of your questions. We got some good ones on the World Economic Forum, Fund, Forum, Forum. forum. <laughs> um, and homeschool and schooling and, you know, weird hats and all kinds of other stuff that we'll get to. So,. <laughs> So again, thanks for tuning in. So yeah, we uh, we just had a really interesting, I don't know, that camera, and maybe we'll pan to it, can probably see it. So that mountain there is essentially a dark, you know, a dark brown, black color now. We had, uh, we had some very interesting fires that sort of tore through uh, this area particularly. We were coming back from Loja a couple of weeks ago, and there was the largest fire that I've seen in my 10 years here, um, more than 10 years here, it, it went basically from Rumishitana to like Nangora, which is like 10 minutes of driving, where it was ripping through these mountains. And basically what happens um, every year is that people light uh, fields on fire to prepare for planting for rainy season, which is coming up here shortly. Um, and so they burn crops from last year and they get ready to plant crops during rainy season. And occasionally those get out of control, but normally they don't get out of control too badly. Uh, this year they did. And so we had quite a, an event here in Vilcabamba where, you know, we had fires around in the mountains. People were out fighting it. The fire department was out fighting it. The community got organized. People went out uh, to save people's properties. Now, there may be new... Digging trenches. Digging I mean, trenches, machetes. Yeah. There, there may be new info that comes out by the time we record next week, but to my knowledge, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe anyone lost uh, a house or or anyone died. Um, I, th I know you heard a rumor, which we don't know yet if it's true, which maybe you'll share in a second. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, really kind of, I think more or less an all's well that ends well situation. 
Um, you know, I think the fires at this point are, are pretty much out. There was a, a governmental, a government ordinance or a, you know, whatever you want to decree, I'm not sure what you call it, out of the municipio in Loja, sort of uh, refreshing everybody's uh, knowledge of the severe criminal and, and financial penalties that they have for these fires like you're allowed to burn on your own property although not right now after this decree you're allowed to burn on your own property but if they reach a neighbor's property you're um both criminally and civilly liable uh for damage for loss of loss of property loss of anything but this is a fairly common practice here is something that does happen every year usually not a big deal this year it was kind of a big deal yeah exactly yeah, there was actually three fires, three main fires in the area, right? Uh, one of them, the first one started in Yamburara, which is sort of up against the Porto Carpus National Park. Uh, that was the biggest one. That was the one that most people were worried about. It was it was on for a good three days, like three days through the night. And what ends up happening, it seems like, is the, you know, sometimes it looks like the fire died down overnight. And then in the morning, as the wind picks up and the sun comes out, it just kind of picks picks back up and starts burning again. Um, and then there was another one right by Murumi Wilco, which is what we're looking at here. Also kind of a protected area. And um, there was one in Nangora, the one you're referring to, that was coming back, coming from the backside. So quite a few fires. I actually read some statistics, and I don't know how accurate they are, but uh, the province of Loja this year, there was 3,000 hectares of forest that burned down this year, um, So that, which is quite a bit. I think it's uh, pretty Yeah, bad. probably not forest. Well, three thousand. Well, three thousand hectares of land, right? Yeah, yeah. Most of that would, almost all of that would be grass. Land. Yes, that's true. Yes. Yeah. And how many acres would that be? Times two and a half. So eight. seven and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Seven and a half thousand acres, right? Right. So that's like yeah. that's that's a small commercial farm in the United States, <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's I mean, it's a lot. It's yeah, a large, yeah. all right. large. Yeah. Large plot. Yeah, there was a rumor that someone died. Um, none of us have been able to confirm that rumor. I've heard it from a few sources, though. Um, but it would have been, I would assume it would be all over social media if someone here died. And yeah, we'll know for sure by the next episode if, right. if that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think anyone's uh, lost their homes either. I haven't seen that. So no. um, the firefighters went mostly to the areas where there were houses, which... You know, these mountains are pretty much inhabitable in most cases. Like, uninhabitable. Uh, uninhabitable. Um, they're not areas that have a lot of houses at all. And like you said, a lot of it is uh, dry brush, bushes, you know, dry grass. That's this kind of stuff that catches on fire. These big, large trees like pine and eucalyptus, they don't typically burn. Um, sometimes there'll even be a huge fire and the trees are still standing. And they'll come yeah. back, you know. This time that was uh, different. The, that whole pine forest burned. Well, I window. think there's still, I think they'll come back, actually. Well, yeah, but it... I mean, it went up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was some flames. Yeah. Flames, yeah. And yeah. It, it got close. I mean, it was close to where I live. Mm -hmm. Like, really close to where I live. Like, I, we were sitting out. Like, all the neighbors are out on the street. We're all sitting out there. When we came back from, from Loja, everybody's sitting out watching. And you can see the flames coming down the mountain. And we're watching. And it's just like, wow. I mean, the, the way it came down the mountain, if it would have got to the ground, that would have been right over by Olivia Natu. So... I mean, we'd have water there, right? So you'd have water to be able to spray yeah. and, you know, it probably wouldn't have spread any, like that's probably where it would have ended. But yeah. the fact that it was even getting to the point where like we had to think about that yeah. and I'm getting ash, like yeah, yeah. I had to clean the, the swimming pool and the hot tub like a thousand times because of the ash was just floating in. We could start to, the air quality was starting to get affected with yeah. the smoke. Um, so yeah, it was, it was starting to get a little bit concerning where we were, where, mm -hmm. man, it doesn't stop soon like it's we might go somewhere else just to have better air quality for the time being but it's it's definitely gotten better and started it rained a little bit it sprinkled a few times which i think helped yeah um but a, a nice rain would would go a long way so pray for rain guys pray for rain right yeah the community came together it's a huge huge uh you know beautiful thing to happen really uh there were WhatsApp groups. People were calling mm -hmm. the whole community to, to go to certain areas where they needed to be uh, people. I went to one area, but uh, there was people that went like and actually fought the fire. I, I didn't. I went to a, a mountaintop to see where the fire was coming from. Um, I'll, we'll show you some footage of that here. And um, the military was sent as well from Loja. I actually saw them arriving. There were two big military trucks full of guys. I think there were 80 soldiers, 80 military men that helped uh, keeping the fire under control. And, um, yeah, it's something that happens here for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I mean, the fire department here, you know, they, they do a great job. Like, they do what they can. They don't have the equipment that you would have back home. So there's no, you know, there's no airplanes right. flying through, <laughs> dumping stuff. And there's no, uh, you know, these. you can see what the mountains look like. Like, you can't really get up into those mountains with anything that's going to put out a fire. So what, you know, what, they, what people do is they just try to create kind of cutoff lines uh, closer to where people actually live where the fire will have a hard time crossing. But we had a good amount of wind these last days, which yeah. I think made it a lot worse. Um, kind of seemed like it was out a couple of times, and then it got windy and, uh, you know, started going again. And I just want to mention, you know, for, for those of you looking at some of the other events like this that have taken place across the world, whether that's Canada or out in Hawaii or, or others, uh, and are and are concerned that those are fishy events. This is not that. Right. <laughs> this is right. you know this is people uh, burning crops and it gets out of hand and it burns you know burns a mountainside that's dry grassland during dry season. Um, this is not people's homes getting you know getting you know disappearing. So uh, no no melted cars no you know no, none of that stuff going on if if you're following any of that. So very different very different event. All right, unless you guys got anything else on that, let's talk politics. So we've um, covered this a couple of times. We have a little bit of new information. So to recap, we have Isabel, uh, what's her last name? Here we go Luisa. again. Luisa, what? Gonzalez. Gonzalez, thank you. I've only forgotten that 87 times. <laughs> we have Luisa Gonzalez, who is the uh, Revolución Ciudadana candidate, the Rafael Correa candidate, the Correista, the socialist candidate, 21st century socialism, as they call it here in Ecuador. Um, and she is running in a runoff election that will take place in October against Naboa. <laughs> um, all right, uh, Daniel Naboa. Daniel, thank you. You guys are, you guys are, I'm being exposed how bad I am with names. Uh, <laughs> uh, versus Daniel Naboa, who is the son of a very, well, son of, of, of a famous businessman, but the family in general is a very well-known, wealthy business family here in Ecuador. Um, banana farmers? Are they? Yeah, and, and many other businesses, other hotels businesses. and all kinds oh, of stuff. Wow. Yeah. Um, based out of Guayaquil. So, um, which actually is interesting because Guayaquil tends to go socialist in, in the way they vote and, and will, maybe won't this time because they have a candidate who's from there. But anyhow, um, so we just, we just had, we had uh, initial elections the first round a few weeks ago. And uh, these two made it through, made it through to the runoff. And we just had the first round of polls coming out over the last days. And Naboa has a sizable lead. Um, so he's up anywhere from like 6 to 10 points or 7 to 10 points, something like that, in the various polls consistently, you know, well ahead. Um, and so, you know, another month to go or whatever it is. Do you, do you know the exact date in October that I the elections did, yeah. are? But yeah, maybe October. somewhere, yeah, so maybe three weeks, four weeks to go. Um, and right now it's looking like... Naboa will win, um, but we'll we'll see. And he, you know, he's interesting guy. Um, comes from business, obviously, but sort of has positioned himself as a center left in some ways. Um, I I don't, you know, I think a lot of people describe him as being from the right, but uh, politics here are different. So it's not it's not uh, it's not as cut and dry as it is back home. Although even that has changed, I think, quite a bit over the years. What. What was called, you know, liberal when I was a kid is not right. is not what they call liberal now. But anyhow, so that's kind of the the political update. Um, let, yeah, the elections on October fifteenth. Nice. Is when the elections. Did you mention Noboa describes himself as central left? Mm -hmm. Yep. Did that? Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Which. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's that's what we got going on here. So we'll keep you guys up to date on the elections here in Ecuador. See what happens. Mm -hmm. Um. So let's get to a few of your guys' questions. So the World Economic Forum. We had a question on what's the vulnerability of the World Economic Forum in Ecuador. Can we even say that word? Are we going to get censored now? Um, <laughs> now or in the future? This is from Rose Zaz, by the way. Thank you, Rose, for the question. Absolutely. Um, and the second part of that question is toxic roundup from Monsanto still not allowed. So, you know, this a lot of this is like, fully just opinion so at least the first part of this question so you know we'll give you our thoughts um so from my perspective you know the any sort of 
global governance bodies, right? Any sort of bodies who would like to global, uh, like to govern globally, like the World Economic Forum and the policies that come out of institutions like that, um, would like to implement their ideas everywhere, right? There, there is not a country where those ideas, or at least the people pushing those ideas would not like to have them implemented. So then the question is, you know, how, how at risk is Ecuador to those policies actually being implemented? And I think, you know, that's a very difficult question to answer. I mean, I think that's, again, kind of purely opinion and also depends on the political winds of who's in office at the time. And then secondarily also depends greatly on what people go for and don't go for. You know, this is a country where the actual population has a real say in the policies of the country. And when they start to Im enact uh, or implement policies that people here are generally against, the people put a stop to it and the government has to respect that. So, you know, I, 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 beyond that, I'm not sure really what else to say. Yeah, I mean, the other thing to think about is just the relative size and population density of Ecuador relative to other countries in the world. It's not like the United States. It's not even like Canada. It's not like lots of parts of Europe even, or, or Russia. Or So Ecuador is a small country, guys. It's the size of Colorado, I think, maybe n not even quite that big and less densely populated, I'm pretty sure. So so you, it, it's kind of similar to how we've we've mentioned before that you know, from an investment perspective, you don't have a ton of industrial money and you don't have big industrial money because the playground for Ecuador is kind of too small for them to, to, to move, to, you know, to play in that environment. Same thing for the World Economic Forum and, and, and policies like that. Eventually, like Jesse said, they're, you know, they want everybody in. You're, you know, they want everybody in the club. But Ecuador isn't high on the list of opportunity because it's such a small small country so eventually will Ec ecuador be there I, I would imagine that they're going to try and make that happen um but we do have the indigenous population and the and, and the population in general that that does fight back and push back against policies they don't like and because you know there's solid infrastructure here but it is limited infrastructure in the way uh you can move goods throughout the country so it's really easy to gain leverage in blocking off some of those trade routes and really push push the government to to bend the knee to make amends to negotiate there's actual power there in the people which is pretty awesome mm -hmm. but from a from a size of country relative to other big countries in the world ecuador is small man so it's i don't know that's that's the only other thing i could think about uh, you know, that, that wouldn't move Ecuador to the top of the list on any of those priority lists for the World Economic Forum. For yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's... Go ahead. Well, is, isn't one of the policies of the World Economic Forum to, to create, like, a digital currency? Is that yeah. part of the, yeah. the thing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I thought it'd be worth pointing out, like, credit cards and, and cards are not have not been used very consistently here. They kind of started in the city. You can use a debit card, credit card, uh, but it's very cash-based. But now what's what's coming out, and I don't know if you guys have used it, but the banks now have apps where you could like scan a QR code and send money when you yeah. buy and sell. So I think most likely, you know, things will transition that direction. I think that's kind of how I see it. Uh, as the younger generation, you know, the older generation dies, I guess, and, and the younger generation knows how to use a phone, it'll be easy to, you know, send transactions to a phone, which I think is going to happen worldwide anyways. But mm -hmm. I think Ecuador will skip the debit card, credit card stuff, kind of go directly to... Uh, cell phones yeah it's also it's also a country where like implementing anything on a large scale is difficult um so you know i think i think you're not insulated from that stuff anywhere in the world sure. but maybe here more than other places yeah um roundup yeah so the question is is toxic roundup from monsanto still not allowed and to my knowledge it was never not allowed um i know there's a gmo ban in ecuador so maybe that's what's being referred to but yeah, people here use use pesticides. They use chemicals um, for various things. That is definitely not something that that doesn't exist here. Right. Well, my understanding is the Ecuadorian constitution doesn't allow to grow GMO crops in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. That being said, they do import potentially GMO products, sure. and it has to be labeled on the package by yeah. law. So, like, my wife is very paranoid about this stuff. She thinks everything, you know, might be contaminated. But you look at a package of noodles and it will say 
contiene transgenico, contains GMO. Literally, it's part of the ingredient. Sometimes it's in bold letters on the package. I don't know who'd want to buy those, but... Well, that's everywhere. <laughs> it's like almost every packaged food product in the world right now. And anywhere. Not That's not just Ecuador. That's yeah. everywhere in the they world. They have to label that it has yeah, GMO in it? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's in oh. it's in all the labels. I don't know if they yeah. have to, okay. but they do, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Well, most products here don't have... Like, it doesn't say that there's GMOs. But there's a few things, like some corn that I would assume is imported potentially here. Corn, you know, corn chips and stuff like that. Uh, it will say there's GMO in it. There's like a soy sauce brand, GM, you know, it says right. has GMO in it. But I think most products don't say anything here. Really? Least, which yeah. makes me assume that they don't have GMOs in them. Okay. Because GMOs are not being uh, grown in Ecuador. Yeah. Most, yeah. most Supposedly. imported corn. Supposedly. Right. Most imported <laughs> corn. Most corn anywhere in the world is G GMO. Yeah. And no. maybe that's where the Roundup thing is because that's what part of, of why they've, Monsanto has used ge genetically modified seeds is so that they get the farmers to because then they're genetically modified to resist roundup and yeah. to resist some of these chemicals so then they can just haphazardly spray them everywhere or use them even like when wheat when they when they do commercial wheat they actually use roundup to dry to yeah. to chemically dry the wheat at the end so because you know so there's i, I don't know maybe that's some of the confusion mm -hmm. on on the on the pesticides and roundup but there's plenty of opportunity and options here for Organic farming, where they don't use, where they don't use pesticides, where they don't use chemicals, um, and that's definitely a large part of the farming here. Yeah, and and many people in this area do grow chemical-free organic um, mm -hmm. crops, and also the in this region particularly, the 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 scale of the farming of the agriculture is micro. I mean, it's right. it's mini micro scale agriculture, and even you know even folks who do spray they spray very little and they even tend to be interested in these sort of green green pesticide type products right and i've seen all around in the local stores here that's now those are now really popular products where they have uh they have you know chemical free basically pesticides where uh where you know you can actually apparently they meet organic standards yep, but you know people are buying those as well but yeah you do see guys like you were talking about before the pod you see guys out with what they call mata monte and and you know they have a little spray and they're killing grass basically mm -hmm. with it with a chemical usually like right around the road or around a pathway and you know it's i don't i don't love seeing that no. but uh in general this area is you know pretty pristine my understanding is mata monte is roundup it's glyphosate i don't know it might right. be yeah uh, round up I mean, it's something like killer. that. It kills yeah. you. <laughs> and you don't see people. You don't see people using that. You know, and we've talked about this in other pods with the difference between having a lawn that people manicure and put weed killer on, and people don't do that here. I don't see. No. I don't see people. No. You know, putting weed killer to kill weeds in their lawn or no. anything like that. Most people don't even have huge lawns anyway because they're growing food or they're growing flowers or they're growing yeah. other things, um, fruit trees. But nobody's using, at least that I've seen, using Roundup to make sure their lawn's pristine right. and manicured. And... Yeah, and it's worth mentioning, we've mentioned in other episodes, but there are a lot of crops that don't require any chemicals or pesticides yeah. that are grown here. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of fruits, a lot of uh, root vegetables, things that grow here, avocados, bananas, coffee, papaya. All your all citrus. citrus. Yeah. Yep. You know, the yuca, which is the cassava, the, the uh, root vegetable, mm -hmm. and a lot of other things as well. The main things that do use it, I believe, are corn. Tomatoes, tomatoes yeah, some beans for sure, yeah. Some of the beans yeah. as well, yeah. 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 Cool. Next question from Travis. Uh, he says, seriously considering the move with my two boys, seven and nine, can you tell me what the schooling situation is like there or do most homeschool? So it depends where you are. Um, in Vilcabamba specifically, there's one private school uh, that a number of our friends send their kids to. It seems to be... Uh, a place that kids enjoy. Um, kids seem to uh, do better there, potentially younger than older. So I think maybe that's a good range, potentially seven and nine for for La Calandria, it's called. Um, but there is a, also a very large uh, homeschooling community here. I'd say probably more parents than not foreign parents uh, homeschool their kids. Um, and then there's public school options as well, which some foreign parents uh, mm -hmm. do that as well. So mm -hmm. those are kind of your options. You know, we don't, I wouldn't say we have like a world-class, you know, school in Vilcabamba. There's some good private schools in Loja, 45 minutes away. Um, but all of that sort of gets made up for 
in the freedom, the social life, and the activity, the plethora of activities available to kids here. Um, so there's just an amazing uh, amazingly vibrant, sort of thriving community of kids um, in Vilcabamba who, um, you know, are just out and about all the time doing awesome stuff. There's clubs, you know, and there's there's a million different activities and sports and on and on and on uh, that kids are into. So yeah. in La, La Calandria, I think they only go to 12. I think 12 okay. and older, you can't you can't attend La Calandria. Yeah. But the schools here, like. Even the public schools. We, I, I know a lot of expats that now are sending their kids to public schools because they want to get them immersed and learn yep. the language. So sure. they're, they're willing to do that for part of the time. You know, the, cla the school here is only, I think it's, it's, it depends on the age, but it's like from 7 to 1 or 7 to noon. So it's not a full day like you'd expect in the States or what you see depending on the ages. But some some parents that I know will send them to the public school and then they'll they'll add on some curriculum and some homeschool. But the homeschool network here is pretty good. There's there's people from all over the world that have brought curriculum or that have their curriculum from Europe or have different curriculums from the United States. Some that are accredited, some that are meeting international standards. So you're kind of learning and you get into these groups and you're seeing like, oh, this is this is what they're learning for this age range or for this level. And this is what they're learning in Europe. And this is what they're learning over here. And you can kind of gauge for yourself, all right, what do I really want my kids to learn? What's really important? Do I want them to learn certain history or, you know, that may or may not be true? Do we want them to learn core math in English and span, you know, um, language, grammar, or that kind of stuff? But probably the, the most important thing for my children that I've seen them really gravitate to and blossom from is just the experiences they're getting here and they're learning from like real life, from, from getting out there and being in the environment. And they're getting science in real life. They're getting it into nature and they're learning about bugs and they're seeing different, you know, animals and plants and all this different wildlife and how to garden and what it takes. And they're learning about the microbiome. And, you know, the kids just went to um, uh, Antonio, uh, uh, one, of the, one of the leaders here in the, in the community. He, he has a, a youth group leadership team that he takes and he kind of mentors and and they and they took him up to to Alicia's property and they did and they learned about soil and and how to properly grow food without chemicals and really restoring the microbiome of the soil and so they're getting hands on from experts at you know that that would be a field trip in in back home in the in the west but they're getting that every day here they're getting that type of experience multiple times a week so it's really you can see them how they're really blossoming from that perspective plus then they're they're doing things that they're excited about like learning from my perspective is you know you can't really force a kid to learn so so you can give you know you can find a way that they learn best and then you can give them opportunities to really develop and grow through that and here it's awesome because they're excited about it they want to learn and they want to do some of these things and they're not even looking at it like learning they're just like oh i really want to do that and like oh good well you can learn about growing plants organically and why it's important yeah. sure sure it's that kind of stuff so that's that's been my experience my kids love love being here and in school here and we do a we do a formal formal curriculum my daughter's 12 my son's seven we've done former formal homeschool curriculum my daughter's been homeschooled her whole life even back in the states um we homeschooled her and so yeah that's it's it's definitely a plus here and doable mm -hmm. yep no my daughter as well my 15 year old does all her stuff online and then she just does a million activities i mean i think the kids here are kind of growing up almost like we did in our generation, which now they don't anymore right. at all in the States, which is like the place they live in is super safe. So they kind of have the run of it yeah. and they're out doing awesome things and having adventures and, yeah. you know, creating and doing cool stuff every day. I mean, I, my two year old and four year old, like I take them to the river like three, four, five times a week, you know, and, and just to have the sort of, because everything's so close to have the proximity and you're, you don't have to worry about them when they're out. It's, it's like, I don't know. For me, it's kind of a 10 out of 10 in terms of a place to both raise kids and to grow up if you are. It was like dust till dawn. We were out dust right. till dawn. My yeah. kids are out till, you know, until right. it gets dark every day, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have two kids. My son is nine. Our daughter's uh, three. Um, our son does homeschool, once again, online, just like you guys. But like you said, all the activities, I just want to mention a few of them, right? There's soccer. Is it every day or is it three days a week? 
Every day. Every day. Six yeah. days, sometimes seven days a week. Yeah. yeah. Six, seven days a week, right? There's games on the weekends. Uh, some of our kids, our kids participate in that. Then there's uh, some dance groups as well, right? Yeah. That's really cool. Oh, like extracurricular activities, sure. Yeah. yeah tons of extracurricular activities, right? Yep. Um, archery. Club, there's yeah, archery. Our hiking groups and hiking horseback groups. rides. There, you right. name it. Yeah, there's knitting clubs and, you know. Chess. Chess groups. Okay. Yeah. Tons yep. of kids stuff. There's a really good piano teacher. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Jiminy. He's a <laughs> he's a prodigy. He's really good. He's pianist. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays all around town. If you come here, you'll definitely see him. He also teaches piano to a lot of our kids. So yeah, comes to the house yeah. once a week. Yeah. Carl, this question's for you from Bruce. Yeah. Why does Jesse have a lampshade on his head? Uh, not to get sunburned. <laughs> That's a good where's answer. You, where's your lampshade? <laughs> where's your lampshade, bro? It's not sunny today. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it's sunny, but it's behind it. Actually, tree. the question's for you. Tell us the oh. story. Tell us the story oh, there's, of the lampshade. I mean, there's no story. It's, it's my wife's hat, and there's sun, and I don't have a good one anymore because I don't travel a lot. <laughs> That's a good story. That's it. It's exciting. <laughs> you gotta wear your Mets hat. They're so I try that great, sometimes. Great baseball team. Yeah, they're great. It's just I mean, it's falling apart. Yeah. I need a new hat. Maybe you can get me a hat. Me a they sell some really good hats in Ecuador. They actually. do. <laughs> well, I used to have the the and Panama hat. hat. Yeah. They they make Panama hats here. They come from. They're originated yep. in Ecuador. I yep. think I'm gonna get a cowboy hat. Yeah. You. Those are nice. Oh, you mean like a like no, a, like a legit cowboy. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, a, leather like hat. a Dallas cowboy hat. Oh. oh. You need a hat here, honestly. You do you need a sun when the sun's out. Especially if you're fun. bald. Yeah. And yeah. Carl still got that. his. <laughs> Carl still got his hair. You know, I got good genetics for the hair. Uh, I don't know, my dad's bald. I hope I don't. There's hope for you still. My dad's gene. Uh, you're good, man. Bald. You're not bald I think, yet. I think, I'm, I think I'm probably good yeah. at this point. I mean, yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is a, this is a funny one. Why so. do you think that's so funny? <laughs> I don't know. Talking about baldness with two bald guys. It's funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should rename the pod. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and as two balls in the stick <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> okay this is actually a good lead into this question Anne asks do you think lifestyle is all that women can talk about cue the least politically correct answer you can Carl Marson I would say no <laughs> <laughs> they do can talk no. about it pretty well but they can talk about other things <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it you nailed it well done Carl <laughs> <laughs> yeah no so this comes from we were we were mentioning that we were going to have the ladies on the pod which we still need to get organized you guys got to talk to Brandon man He's, he just doesn't chime in with the help on the on the wives episode oh if looks could, if looks could kill bro <laughs> oh no um so yeah, so this comes from this comes from a, a comment where we're gonna have the women on the pod, and we mentioned that there's too much going on politically, uh, and we didn't want to do sort of a lifestyle episode in the middle of right. all that kind of stuff. And uh, so yeah, so just to you know, just to sort of clarify that, no, of course, women can talk about you know absolutely anything they want, and many do very well. The only thing is, is that you guys have heard us babble about these things for years, potentially. Um, and when we bring on the ladies, we really want to give that other perspective, right? Sure. That sort of feminine perspective, the other side of what is life like here, you know, in Vilcabamba, as opposed to having them come on and talk politics and economics. Well, and it would be like a five-hour episode. On the which if we brought the wives on, yeah. <laughs> nice. You guys are two for two. All right. <laughs> now our yeah. wives have a lot to say. Actually, I think you don't say. We'll get <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> we need to get them on. Actually, we next will. week, unless there's something major that we have to talk about, we'll bring the wives on. Excellent. I All hope right. so. One of these weeks, and we'll make sure they only talk about cooking. <laughs> and cleaning. Oh okay, boy, okay, we're gonna get roasted. Okay, we are gonna get roasted. <laughs> we're joking. These are <laughs> jokes. Jokes. Uh -huh. and jokes. In fairness, here as I've said in a previous episode, which I got a lot of heat for in one of the shorts, you can hire cleaning ladies and people to cook for you here for very affordable. And I should address it. Uh, someone was mad because I said I could. I would pay. We pay our cleaning ladies three dollars an hour. Is actually higher than the going on rate is, here, and you know we give them time off, we give them free food, we give them gifts. You know, we're, I, they're very happy to work for us. Actually, they, they sometimes local people will pay their employees 
uh, way under the minimum wage. Yep. Yep. Uh, there's people paying ten dollars a day. I, Venezuelan girl told me they were paying yeah. her five dollars a day to clean her their house for a full yeah. day because she was Venezuelan. She wasn't affiliated. She's not Ecuadorian. Blah blah. blah. So people here, not you know, just any people can can. Uh, Take advantage of the situation, but uh, I think our cleaning ladies are very happy to be paid three dollars an hour. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And that's just you know that just goes to the the market rate for things, and also includes <laughs> are you blowing kisses, <laughs> and also includes um, and also includes just what you know the scale right economically here. So so three dollars an hour if you're coming from the U.S. or, or Europe or it sounds like poverty wage three dollars here gets you a a beautiful you know lunch with a with a drink and a and a main course and a soup and you might get 50 cents or a dollar back so you know that's just the the scale hey guys if you're liking this video give us a thumbs up if you're not subscribed to the channel yet go right now and subscribe to the channel and if you want to hear more if you want us to do an in-depth cost of living video where we dive into budgeting, housing, food, extracurriculars, um, daily consumables. That if you want us to run the gamut detail-wise with pricing, is most update pricing we can give, then comment below cost of living. Write in the comments cost of living, and if we get enough, if enough requests, we'll do a specific episode that dives deep into that for you guys. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, all right. We got another question on the World Economic Forum. Uh, are <laughs> it's a popular any, topic. Uh, it's probably the topic. Are any of the presidential candidates members? To my knowledge, no, but I don't can't say I know that for a fact. Um, mm. Pam O'Brien asks, can my husband use his VPN to watch NFL football in Vilcabamba? Absolutely. Brandon does every Sunday. Well, I, I join him on occasion. It's, it's interesting, guys. So... So there's different copyright laws here in Ecuador. They don't necessarily honor the copyright laws and copyright broadcasting laws that the U.S. you know enforces. So you can you can watch live sports in Ecuador because they don't ban websites. So you can access the the Russian search engines and all the websites that we can't access in the states. You can access those here, and they don't care about copywriting live sports. So you can watch that stuff here. Um, and find links to that stuff. Now, what's interesting that I found out in Ecuador is the, the, the NFL ticket in Ecuador, they do have non-US packages, and which is what I have through the, through the Dazen app this year. Um, and I don't even remember, what was it, 100 bucks? I don't, I don't even remember. Yeah, it's like 100 bucks. I just bought it, yeah, maybe like 120, 130, okay. 140, something like that for okay. the year. I don't yeah. recall, but, yeah. it's, but it's every game from every team um, you get the NFL Network, mm-hmm. and you get the Red Zone Channel, yep. and it's a fraction of what the I, I don't know. I think YouTube has the NFL ticket this year, and it's like four hundred bucks or five hundred bucks. So it's a fraction yeah, of that. So you, you don't can, even need the VPN. Yeah, and and for that yeah. service, you don't need the VPN at all, mm-hmm. right? And even the other items, you don't need the VPN. So now there is game. There are games. If you really want to get into it, you can. Um, at least prior to them, the NFL Game Pass moving to Days In, which I I didn't. Uh, attempt this but the vpn if you vpn from different south american countries they had different pricing and then you could arbitrage the currency exchange Uh so like last year i did it and i was able to go through i forget was it columbia i I forget i went to another south american country and i was able to arbitrage and get get it for like 60 bucks Uh um this year it auto renewed on me and i didn't catch it in time so we'll see maybe next year we Mm -hmm. can give you some vpn tips to save a few bucks on the NFL, <laughs> hey, my Bears was a rough, was a rough go. It's been a rough, rough go with decade the, and a half with those Packers, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a tough one, but we'll, we'll get it together here. We'll get it together. You won't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ella Sear asks, uh, and this must be from some months back. Hi, does this, does the land remain green, or maybe this was on a property? Does the land remain green like this all year, or? Does, is there a dry season where grass turns brown? So, you know, to sort of uh, answer that question fully, in Ecuador in general, there is a rainy and a dry season. Now, that varies by region and it varies by elevation. So in the Amazonian region, you have no dry season. Um, in the vast majority of the, of the mountains, the Sierra and the coast, um, you do have a rainy and a dry season. Up north on the coast, you just do not have a dry season. Um, and at the 
very much higher elevations, you essentially do not have a dry season in the mountains in the Sierra. But in the vast majority of the country, you do have a rainy and a dry season. The rainy season is pleasant. It's comfortable. It's not uh, Indian monsoons. You know, it's, it's, it's just you have some rain, generally speaking, in, at night um, or at the afternoon and at night. Usually in the morning, you don't get much rain, if any. Um, and it doesn't rain every day. Then during dry season, it dries out. So you can see behind us, we're deep in a dry season now. We're kind of at the end of dry season um, here in this region. And so the mountains are green and uh, the rains will come back. Where are we at here? Mid-September. So normally in about a month and a half or a month, the rains will start to come back. Things will start to green up usually by December, certainly January. Uh, things are very green in this valley and then they stay that way. Uh, until June normally changes a little bit every year we did have some little bit of rain during during dry season this year which was nice um, but but the weather has been spectacular here for the last couple of months mm -hmm. um, so yeah all right what else we have here I think that's I think you know I think we do. oh no this is let's do this one so Hi guys, are you seeing people leave now? A lot of bad press. Ecuador is on BBC News almost every day. I get I get questions or extreme concerns about uh, about Ecuador expressed. Are expats picking up and leaving? Um, so in this area, certainly not. Um, I can't imagine they are anywhere in the country, but we don't live. Uh, in other places, but in the Vilcabamba Loja region, absolutely not. Um, here, the attitude is kind of a, a, a chuckle about, you know, some of the press because it's it's um, it's it's hyperbolic. It's just press. It's not. It doesn't hyperbolic. reflect that. That's yeah. literally what it is, man. It's hyperbolic, yeah. and I think that's a good caveat, though, that you said that we're we're speaking about this region right mm -hmm. we're not it's not and again ecuador is the size of colorado so we're it's like trying to say are people leaving colorado maybe in some places there are some places they aren't in ecuador are expats leaving ecuador maybe in some places you know i don't know but but here in the vilcabamba region you're not you're not seeing seeing a ton of that you're seeing you're seeing people move here from all over the world i mean we're, we're mm -hmm. seeing people come here i'm getting messages questions every day from families wanting to know our family staying i read the news or i read i read i saw the i saw this other youtube channel or i saw this and you know and they want to know what is it really like there and that's kind of what we we do for you guys here is we tell you what it's really like here we're not speaking for guayaquil we're not speaking for monta we're not speaking for all over the, the country um we're speaking for this region and because that's the region we have access to and we're we're in in out day in and day out for decades um so so that's that's the truth here and it's it's interesting because i'll see comments even on the youtube channel where i see people chiming in oh this bad about ecuador this bad about you know like oh that's why oh it's dangerous and 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 again you don't know where some of these people if they even live in ecuador but people just chime in and then you're seeing responses to those to those questions like oh tell me more like people are like gravitating to that fear to that negativity and they want to they want they hear something they don't even you know they don't even know where that person's from but they're going to respond and give them give them the floor to like feed them more bs yeah. so it's just I, I don't know it's it's hyperbolic man it's hyperbolic and it becomes an echo chamber and you see that yeah. in facebook groups you see that in the youtube channel comments you see it in other channels and they're Listen, guys, we, we want we want you we want the YouTube channel to grow because we want to, we want more people to see what this place is. We want to, we want them to see what Ecuador has the offer and 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 what what your life can be like here. But we're not doing things just to get views. We're not doing we're not trying to be hyperbolic in in fear. Are we joking around with thumbnails and stuff like that? Carl's Carl's got some great thumbnails and titles. But that's like in a in a, com a comedic way, not in a not in a scare tactic. This is really you know fearful way, like run and hide to Ecuador. Like that's not what we're doing, guys. So hopefully you see that. Hopefully that comes through. I don't know if you guys want to add to that, but it's that's one of my biggest pet peeves is this echo chamber fear based manipulation, and I see people falling into it, and I know I was a victim of it. You know, I let myself be a victim of it before I got here, and I mm. and I gave it way more credence than I should have. And then being here, I see that, wow, most of this bullshit, most of these people don't even live here. Most of these people are just 
saying shit to mess with people, you know? And yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would say, like, if someone was a victim of a crime, you know, which do happen sometimes, they might decide to leave Ecuador, right? But uh, I don't know that many people who have left Ecuador for those reasons. Uh, I actually know people, I know quite a few people that live in Guayaquil, right. the, most, the biggest, most dangerous city in Ecuador. Um, shout out to Father Rafael from Montenegro, Serbia. <laughs> and there's a bunch of Russians, there's a bunch of people that live in Guayaquil. They've lived there for 10, 15, 20 years, you know, they're accustomed to life there. They, they say, you know, it's, you know, there's some danger. You got to be careful. Don't go out at night. Don't do this. But, you know, they live in the, in the biggest, most dangerous city in Ecuador and they're not going anywhere, you know, even though there's been an increase in crime. So Vilcabamba is extremely safe, extremely quiet. I feel very safe here. You know, we wouldn't let our kids run around freely. I mean, we saw your daughter right. today run around, you know, right. I mean, our kids are literally like out in town right now, you know, in broad daylight. Um, and, and nothing happens, right? Like, no, there's never been a kidnapping. There's never been, you know, any of that stuff. And, and no matter how much we tell the truth about it, we still get comments like, well, how do you, how much do you pay the locals to not skin you while you're sleeping? You know, like, that, <laughs> literally, that's a comment that I just read. Really? What are you paying? Right. Oh, that's fine. You're paying, your cost of living is so cheap, but what are you paying for the locals to not skin you? Like wow. what? It's wild. Like it's, like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> no. Like no, that, it's not how it is. And and you know if someone shows up here, they don't speak the language. They're reading all of this stuff, and they're like afraid that this is happening. They might think, oh, the locals don't like me, and oh, they're trying to rip me off, and oh, you can't trust people. Like we live. I've been here for 12 years. I speak fluently the language. You speak fluent Spanish. You're married in the culture. You've been here a few years. You, you know we we know from firsthand that it's not how it is. Like we have. Lots of Ecuadorian friends, and the Ecuadorians, they love that expats are moving here. They don't right. want to chase us away. Like, we're, we're helping them with their businesses, the economy, creating jobs, hiring people, building houses. I mean, we're, you know, it's, it's a really positive impact on the economy. They don't want us to run away. They know every time there's a crime, there's a robbery, there's something that happens. They know it's bad for the reputation of Vilcabamba, for example, and they don't want that to come out. And, you know, and they, it hurts their businesses. It hurts their, their livelihood. So... Uh, yeah, that's and, how it is. and just in two years, in two years for me, like you, you have relationships with these with these people. Even though we're not hanging out every day, but I'm spending time. I spend time with several taxi drivers all the time, almost every day. Mm -hmm. We're having conversations. I know about their kids. He knows about my kids. He's giving me warnings about stuff. Hey, you know the fire, like with the with the fire. He's telling me about this. Just be careful. Or hey, you know like. This is on sale. Like I'm getting, I'm getting tips like that. Like they're, they're friends. It's not, it's not, it's not just transactional. They care about you. As long as you're genuine to them and you, you're being a, an awesome person and you care about them and not just like, Hey, go do your job. Drive me here. Go get that. You know, mm. if you treat people like that, then you're going to get treated like that. Right. But if you treat people like how you would want to be treated and you have a relationship and actually care, then you get that back. And it's, it's awesome, man, because you, you feel it every day and those people you see every day and then when you need it the most they're there for you yeah 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 it's it's only us that have those weird like things in our head people here don't have that right. like people here they're living their lives they tend to be really nice people they tend to be really good people mm -hmm. they care about their communities they care about where they where they live and if you live there they care about you too because you're part of the community and just like you guys both said, you know, if you if you you get you get treated how you treat people here, um, you know, I think I think you're probably I think you're probably treated orders of magnitude. I'm sorry, I think you're probably welcomed into a new community in Ecuador, uh, at least in this region, orders of magnitude better than you would be, you know, moving from one town to another back home. Hundred you know, percent. Like, yeah, like you know, this is. Uh, just all of those thoughts, they're just literally irrelevant here that you have about cultural barriers and what people think and will you be accepted and all that kind of stuff. It's just complete, just doesn't exist. Like it literally just in this region does not exist. People love interacting with foreigners. They're curious about you. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're happy to make friends with you. Um, you know, you, your, your Spanish is still a work in progress and you haven't, you know, you've been here two, three years or whatever. Like I lived in Loja for years and years where all of my friends were Ecuadorian. All of my social situations were, were local. Um, now I live in Vilcabamba where it's, you know, it's more mixed. 
but some of my closest friends here are Ecuadorians. Like the the all of our kids are doing everything with Ecuadorians. Like right. it's there isn't there isn't that you know there's no divide. There's no like people no. that is that's not a thing here at all. So um, yeah, and as far as the you know the safety stuff, it's just completely absurd. Um, everywhere in the world has stuff going on, but like the media. The media just finds things to blow up, no matter what, no matter where, right? Like, you could read about a city in the U.S. that sounds like it's a war zone, but if you went there and walked down the street, you'd think everything's fine. It's it's no different here. You know, there's something happens with a cartel on the coast or whatever, and it makes international press. There's nothing to do with safety. There's nothing to do with people's lives here. Um, certainly not in this region, but really, I would argue, even in, even in most of the country. And yeah, in terms of the negativity, like, that's just the internet, you know? Like the internet, you know, people jump on these things and they are negative about about whatever, not Ecuador, right? About the NBA, about you know, about celebrities, about whatever, you know, whatever they're 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 kind of bitching about. But yeah, if you if you really want to understand what life is like here, come visit or talk to people that actually live here, verify, you know, that they actually live in the place that they're talking about, because it's just not perception is not reality in this case. Yeah, and I have an anecdote to share. Um Something that happened today, actually, and I'll start with this. If you live here, if you live in Vilcabamba, if you want to be uh, kind of aware of what's going on in the, in the community and stuff like that, there's a, two WhatsApp groups. One is called Seguridad, Chat de Seguridad Vilcabamba. The other one is called Chat Comunitario Vilcabamba. They have a couple hundred, two, three hundred uh, members on one. The other one has uh, almost 200 now. Um, and it used to be that someone could add you to the group. If you go to the police station here in Vilcabamba, you you know, tell them who you are, say, can you add me to those two groups? They'll add you happily. And, you know, the mayor's on there, all the police officers are on there, all the main, you know, the main people in Vilcabamba, I guess, that own the, the, the businesses and stuff that are, you know, around town are on the group. And today, <clears throat> uh, one of the stores in Vilcabamba, right downtown, somebody from, nobody recognizes him, someone probably from somewhere else was in there and stole a cell phone. So there's, um, well, basically stole a cell phone, walked away and... By they stole found... a cell phone, you mean like picked it up off a table yes, or something? Yes. So yeah, we can actually maybe show the footage. <laughs> I have the footage. Um, the guy walked in. He, th I think he was with a lady that distracted the store owner, walked towards the counter, and there was a cell phone sitting there. He kept looking. Eventually grabbed the phone, put it in his pocket, and walked away. And as soon as they found out, they posted the video footage of the camera on this WhatsApp group, on this uh, security group. And then all the members of the community started being on the lookout for the person who sold the phone. So one guy took a picture, said, he's over here by the bus station. And someone else said, hey, he's here in, in Malacatos, the next town over. And the police went, found the guy, arrested him. And, you know, through the community coming together through this WhatsApp group, uh, the guy was arrested, right? And uh, this was a cell phone that was stolen by, from a local store owner by a local person. And, uh, yeah, so it's one of the things that's, that's going on here. Um, so it's a far cry. It's a far cry from in the states where they're passing laws in states where now they're not even prosecuting if you loot a store and it's less right. than six hundred dollars in right, value right, in right. merchandise. Like, that. what? That, I mean, is that real? I mean, are you kidding me? Like, that's yeah. that's what life is like. But here, hey, somebody gets their phone snagged and the community comes together to find the guys. Oh, yeah. Like, how awesome no, is yeah. that? Right, right. And pe and people were like adamant, like, let's get him. Where is he? Like, let's look for him. And, you know, th there was a lot of people going back and forth and like, you know, we need to identify and find him. Uh, yeah. So it's a breath of fresh air, in my opinion. And yeah, I would recommend foreigners get added to the group for sure. Go to the police station, get that done. And the more people are on the group, the more, you know, we can we can be together, united and fight, you know, uh, the little petty crime that's happening somewhere around town. Of course, the fires is a similar thing. When the fires were happening, uh, people were taking videos and photos of where the fire was located, the houses that were, uh, you know, endangered, and and the community went over and and uh, took care of it. So, I mean, like cities and towns back home have tremendous homeless problems, problems with you know people who are homeless, tremendous problems with drugs. You know, uh, fentanyl and other drugs have like practically taken over, you know, certain age groups in in many places in the states. And they've got kids shooting each other. You know, you got young people shooting each other, like, all over the U.S. Those three things in this region do not exist at all, zero. There are no drug addicts. There are no homeless at all, like, literally zero. Um, and nobody, nobody shooting each other. <laughs> Children, young people, 
are not in gangs and they're not shooting each other and they're not angry. They're not even doing graffiti. They're polite. They're saying good morning to you. <laughs> right. And like they're really well mannered. Like it's just it's a different world. You know, this culture is it's intact still for for very largely intact. Families are tight knit, communities are tight knit. It's like what you see from I the love movies this place. in like, the nineteen fifties. Yeah. Like That's in the right. 1950s, you were running, Timmy. Like, right. It's like right. that. Leave yeah. it to Beaver, you right. know, like right. Ecuadorian style. Yeah. Yep. Hunt like so. Sports, man. Sports are good, man. Sports here, like all the, most of the kids are playing sports. Like that's yeah. a, and I know it's a different thing. In the States, they're like, it, it's turned to like, like really structured and formalized. And now you got to be playing club soccer and club this and club baseball and club basketball. And you have to pick a sport and they're doing these, you know, really formal things since, you know, since they're two years old and they have, you know, they're kind of like stealing the joy of sports. Like sports is like a great uniter. I mean, either that or there's like 12th place participation. Right. Well, well, you're right. But they're ruining it from both ways. But you throw, you throw a soccer ball in the field anywhere in the world. Kids know what to do with it, right? It's like a universal language, man. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. So, so sports here are still have some of that joy, like some of that purity that 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 it's not so structured, right? Like my like this, clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. You guys know where that's from, right? No, no. That's Friday Night Lights, man. I got if you guys if you guys know what this is, <laughs> it's a show. It's a but it's about high school sports, like yeah. from a small country, a small town rural town and you know kind of how it how sports are here right so it's pretty awesome and speaking of high school sports my i have an old friend paul dumel his son is a sophomore he's six foot 200 pounds he's a sophomore starting on jacobs eagles high school football team as a as a as a running back and a middle linebacker and starting as a sophomore in a high school sports in this type of program is pretty awesome the kid's a beast he just played um they just played huntley he ripped off 100 yards couple of touchdowns starting middle linebacker so nice. shout out Caden Dumel well done man nice awesome excellent awesome. awesome yeah I was going to mention about sports it, they're they're the big events here you know when there's a soccer game though you know a lot of the community goes and watches the game and there was uh, something cool that I saw recently there's a uh, equa volley is also a popular sport here it's like volleyball but with a larger ball it's like volleyball except you can cheat you can cheat. Uh, the net's much higher. Right? <laughs> so true. You, you can carry, but I think the ball is different. No, it's it harder. Is. It's almost. It's, I think it's a soccer ball, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's like, like a, a hard ball. soccer ball. Right? Super hard. Yeah. 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 Uh, and but they're really into it here. And yeah, yeah no, it's awesome. It's awesome. And they're good. They right? are. They're impressive. Yeah. Like, like, those were good players. Actually, the the new mayor in Loja, he yeah. was a, a champion, a famous Equivalley player, and uh, now he's a mayor. So interesting. But. But uh, he's right a here, good in, guy, I think too. Yeah, he seems like a great guy. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. Um, they were playing here in Vilca. It was a huge event. It was packed, and it was this famous Equivalley girls team. You seen that? No. Three three girls, I think, from Quito or Guayaquil. I don't even know where they're from, but they're, apparently they're really good uh, females, and they were playing the best team in Vilcabamba, mm. guys. So it was wow. a female team against the guys, and the girls won actually. Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> awesome. The guys, yeah, yeah. But it was a big thing, and it was all this like. It was, it was beautiful. I, I, there was, I saw a video. They were, everyone wanted to take pictures with the girls, and it was like they were, you know, in the community, and uh, everyone had a good time. It wasn't like it's a highly competitive thing. Or I'm sure it was competitive, but you know, they were. Oh, it's got to be highly competitive. I think I think the men were okay losing to them, kind of thing. Okay. Right? <laughs> They're cute girls. <laughs> Show us. <laughs> Show <a picture>. I know. <laughs> Carl has no filter, oh. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm saying this because you know the, they were happy losing to them. They were happy losing to them. And oh uh, yeah. Then <laughs> <laughs> <And> you <laughs> interviewed them about lifestyle afterwards. Say right? what? You didn't <laughs> ask them about the competition. You asked them about lifestyle. Like parenting. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, cleaning and stuff. No, I mean that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is so ridiculous. <laughs> no, but that's that's how that's how everything is here, right? Like the the one of the local uh, credit unions, like the co-ops, the banks, uh, co-op cooperativa. Um, they, they sponsored, it was like their something year anniversary in Vilcabamba. I think this was what, Vil, what's it called? Vil? Oh yeah. What's Cacvil. It? Cacvil, thank you. Cooperativa uh, Auros Vilcabamba. And they sponsored a concert by a band who maybe you know the name. I don't know. The name, Tierra Canela. Tierra Canela. Yeah. We have some footage. Uh, which, team which, uh, there. yeah, which translates to cinnamon land. Um, but they, they, uh, reminds me of Candyland. but, um, 
they they sponsored a concert and so apparently this group is very famous um and it's a group that's old to the point where like the members have changed mm. but they're still really famous and they came to Vilcabamba, you know, this tiny little town in the southern Andes that the bank sponsored. They had a massive concert. And, you know, you get, you just have these events that happen pretty frequently. And you don't have to worry at all about anything, right? right. There's just, there's families. It's all families, pretty much. Yep. From babies to elderly, like truly elderly, like cent centenarian, you yep. know, age people. Centenarians. Centenarians? Oh, this might be right. Correct us in the comments. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> you were bold with it. You better be right. Long cables. Right. Um, and you know, it's it's just it, those. That's like the thing here, right? So it's not like you know, back home you have like you know the West Indian Day Parade or something, and 15 people get shot. You know, right. and you have stuff like that. Wow. Don't call me racist. I'm just saying an event, whatever kind of event, uh, concert, right? People are getting. You know, things happen like that. Here you have these kinds of things and it's just families out having a good time. There weren't even fights. Like no. some of the biggest parties I've seen here, biggest events, there's not even there's not even fights in this. You know, normally you'll see that at every concert. You're going to see groups of fights. and right, there, It wasn't that. Like no. our people are intoxicated, but they're like friendly and happy. and they're they're, not... Even the drunks are good natured. Right, right. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. interesting. And ba back to sports quick. There's the, the Vilcabamba Cup, right? Isn't it? I think it's, I forget what they're calling it, but there's the men's soccer league. Right. We're sponsoring one of the teams. Mm -hmm. that I think the quarterfinals are this weekend, semifinals are next weekend. Um, so that's a big event here and we'll get some footage from that for you guys because it's pretty cool because the, the community comes out and fills the stands and there's food and it's pretty cool pretty cool to see so mm -hmm. we'll get some of that for you guys awesome I think we've gone on here long enough guys thank you please give a like on the video subscribe to the channel uh, share this content with your friends throw some questions in the comments what yes. would you like us to talk about in future episodes favorite kind of content post it below what you guys want us to talk about and then if you want if you want us to do a specific episode, a deep dive on cost of living, write cost of living down below in the comments and we'll get that one out for you guys. We hope to see you here one day. And until then, see you next time. Ciao, guys.